Okay, so look, I know what the problems are. You know, as a startup, as a newer business, cash flow is tight, and you know you may have personal issues. You're going to have personal disasters. Investors will die. That's happened to me. Um, so totally relate to the problems that you're having. So we're going to have a presentation about cash flow um, in that phase of your business. You know how how to start the, that business off on the right foot or how to restart it maybe if you've already started our main focus here today would be um, cash all right um, so I'm Darren Virapa and I'm a CPA uh, I was a uh, finance director CFO um, that's my background now I've got a tax practice and um, yeah so I have probably helped over a thousand businesses uh, generate close to 1.2 billion dollars in revenue, cash, and all that so far for various uh, businesses that I have owned, or been part of, or, or or this current business that I'm that I'm involved with right now. Um, so, but before we do any any of that, what what you need to look at is how to set up your accounting processes on the get go, how to start off with, and and where you start off with that is usually the chart of accounts. You know, that's that's potentially where um, the mistakes and the errors start already. Um, a lot of accountants will tell you that you know it needs to be detailed. It needs, you need to have you know all the accounts that you need there, and you know um, and really go for it at that point and, and have it expanded to cover all the different aspects of your business. I tend to disagree with that. I think that you need to have the bare minimum on your chart of accounts. Um, like for example, why have you know 50 different expense accounts, travel expense accounts, if your total expense bill for the whole year is going to be $500, there's no need for that. You know, your bookkeeper at the tax time and all that can break out whatever needs to be broken out, analyze it, and, and, and submit the tax stuff. So you, you don't really need to have all these different accounts you know, everywhere like that. Um, you want to have the key accounts, the ones that have something to do with profitability, something that you can control. Like, for example, if you've got different types of suppliers, who's more expensive, who's not as expensive, your cost of sales, break it down, marketing, you're spending money on Facebook, you're spending money on Google, you're spending money on different platforms, have that broken out so that you know how much revenue each of these accounts are generating, all these expenses are generating. Okay, sorry for the accent. I've got an accent. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, now the next question that that I get asked as well when businesses are in this phase are uh, is is it cash or accrual? Um, the the answer is if you're a micro micro business, no matter what the justification is for accrual, usually you're better off with cash. Um, accountants like myself would tend to like the accrual system. Um, and the accrual system will come in handy if your revenue is kind of lumpy. And your expenses or your expenses are kind of lumpy because what will happen is you may get all the revenue in the first three months of the year and then the expenses start coming after that so if you run a report to show what the monthly profitability was it's going to have ups and downs and it's not going to marry up so you're not going to know i spent three thousand dollars and made five thousand dollars in that month you won't be able to see it the three thousand dollars could be month four and the five thousand dollars in month one so because of that, the accrual system tends to align things nicely, but you don't have to do it that way, okay? Um, so there's that. I hope that answers that accrual versus cash. And also, don't forget that you can run an accrual system and file your taxes in the um, cash manner as well, or cash method, sorry. It, you know, you don't have to make both of them align there. You use a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet aligns with your tax return and that's usually fine. Um, speaking of taxes, don't be afraid of taxes. If you're paying a lot of taxes, it's because you're making a lot of money, okay? And if you're gonna chase investors, which a lot of you probably intend to do, you're gonna look for funding or you're gonna to wanna to borrow money and all that, you wanna have a nice fat tax return where you, it shows that you made a lot of profit, which would then have a tax bill. So tax is not, evil per se. Um, as a matter of fact, if your tax bill is really small, it's usually because your profit is really small and that's a big no-no when it comes to um, investors. They're going to run. Uh, so just be a bit mindful of that as well. Okay, so next question. Why do we track? Uh, do we get detail or do you have buckets of costs? Um, the answer is kind of both. So I'm going to give you two methods on how to do this because at the end of the day, it's going to come down to you, right? It's going to be you who's going to be doing all these things at the beginning. And I'm going to tell you, 
shortly why that has to be you. Um, but I'm going to give you two methods that I've learned from Brian Tracy. Look him up, very good coach, by the way. Um, one method in tackling this task, he calls it the salami method, and the other one is the Swiss cheese method. So if you're a vegan, I don't know. Uh, anyway, just it's a bad joke. Um, the salam, salami method is because it's like, you, you know, salami is basically a sausage that's been sliced, right? So you attack your financial issues in slices. That's what I usually do, by the way. I address all my financials every day. Uh, probably one of the first tasks in the morning, five to ten minutes a day, and I'm done with it. And because I've done it for years, I've gotten better and better at it. It takes me less and less time to do it. So five, ten minutes in the, in the morning, you just get it out of the way and then you move on with the, with the rest of your day. There's five, ten minutes, what do I do? Probably a bank wreck, have a look at something that looks weird in the financials, analyze that, fix the issue, and move on. But if you think about that compounded over years and years, every month I'm spending about five, six hours on this, right? It's 300, what is it, 30 times 10, so 300 minutes. But I don't feel it. It, it really, like if I did it or I didn't do it, it wouldn't change my day. That's the salami method. The Swiss cheese one is you punch holes in the task, yeah? So you Swiss cheese with the holes, round holes in them, punching holes in them. Some people do this. Uh, Friday night, they'll have a drink after work or whatever. Okay. Um, they're drinking Sprite, okay? I don't want this to be all about alcohol and get all these comments and criticism later on about this. Uh, so don't write comments about this below below the video, please. Um, so anyway, um, you know, Friday afternoon, they're having their Sprite. They'll sit down for a few hours and, you know, take care of all the financials while they're doing it. So they've associated something pleasant with the financials, which is a very good way to get this done because a lot of people don't like to do this. I'm not lying to myself. I'm not in that business. So that's that's that. Um, when it comes to cash flow issues, the main ones that I tend to come across are they have money tied up in inventory, businesses that, that manage stock. So they don't have a very good inventory system. So they don't know how much to reorder. They're reordering too much way too ahead. Um, and that's money that could be used going somewhere else, or that's money that could be used on their lifestyle, that could be money that they could treat themselves for something and feel like you know they're not burning out. Instead, they're spending ahead on inventory because they have no idea or because they're a bit scared of it. So you need good inventory control if you're in that sort of business. Um, look at your suppliers. If I asked you right now, do you know which one of your suppliers would not complain or winch if you were a few weeks late? Do you know who they are? You need to have that list ready uh, because if they're not going to complain about not being paid on time, don't use that money or keep that money in your bank account because that's safety. Um, you know, don't pay people ahead is what I'm trying to get at, get there. But if they're they're gonna they're gonna start acting up, they're gonna start reducing your credit or whatever it is. Find out what their terms are and stick to it. But you know, it's not a blanket sort of thing. Don't pay people ahead is the main point here. Okay. If it's not due for another few weeks, don't pay them now just because, ooh, I need to pay my debts. That's you're not a business owner if you're doing that. You, you, you know, you, you're more. You need to look at the issue. Why do you have anxiety? Do you need counseling? Do you need, you know, like meditation? I don't know some other thing. But that's not business. All right, that's a different thing that you need to look after there. That that's an emotional issue. You don't bring that to the table when you're running a business. Like Brad Pitt said in Ocean's Eleven, I think. Leave the motion at the door. <laughs> You're talking about the emotion. Hard to do in practice, I understand, but you do need to do it. Accounts receivable. Automate that stuff. That's another place where money gets tied up real bad. Um, you need to automate your reminders that go to people, and then at the end of that, automate how that file gets passed on to a debt collector to send the letters out. If they, you know, it's going to that point. Someone hasn't paid you for three or four months. You need to have an automated sort of reminder that tells you when to stop working on that account as well. Don't keep on working on it if they're not paying. Um, ask for your money. Um, and again, it's a muscle. A lot of these things are, are like, it's like a muscle that you need to build. Uh, you'll have some emotional resistance to that at first. Everyone feels it. Even the, you know, some of them when these business owners, you see they're very successful with their cash, they're pushing hard and all that. Most of them didn't start that way. And they all have that little feeling, those little butterflies in the stomach when they actually have to, to make that phone call. Okay, so you're not by yourself there. Um, we all feel it, but you know, we push through and at first it's hard, push through 10, 15, 20 times over years and years of doing it. Eventually it still feels a bit weird, but it's a lot easier to do it, to get in someone's, well, not to get in their face, but to, to be actually to ask for the money that you work for. It's your money, right? So ask for it. 
and always, 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 always have a cash forecast. There's no excuse for that. You don't have a cash forecast. You're you're going to fail. Okay, that there's no excuse for that. You need to make up time if you need to go to bed an hour later. Go to bed an hour later. Build your cash flow forecast. You will get it wrong. Everyone gets it wrong. Even 20 years from now, you're still going to get it wrong. That's not the point. We're going to talk about what the point is and why you need to do that later. Okay, but that's more important than your revenue target. Mm, big statement there. Big bold statement. There's a few of those in this presentation. Okay, next one. Um, all right, so some of you, you may say this when you hear it and go, oh, what cash flow? <laughs> you know, what cash flow do you want to forecast? There's no cash flow, man. Like, we need cash flow. I thought that's what you were going to help with. Well, not really, but I can give you some tips in terms of how to manage that at this point in your business life. Um, you need to have three things if you want to actually have a cash flow to manage, okay? The first thing you need to work on, you need to start working on all, all three of them, actually. You need to start working on right now, okay? Uh, so I don't know, I'm not gonna say number one, number two, number three, I'm just gonna call them number one, number one, and number one, because you gotta do all three of them at the same time. Long-term, you gotta have a long-term plan. Why? Because you don't always have to be worrying about survival from day to day. You know, you, you, you need to be, um, thinking about this long term, um, you need to have some processes. Maybe it's branding. Once you get a big enough brand, 12 months from now, business starts coming your way. You know, then you don't have to worry about the day to day. You just keep working on your branding a little bit. The pressure is off. You know, you don't have that stress. So you have to have a long term plan. Now, to get to the long term plan, you're gonna have to survive long enough to get there, right? Which is a lot of people are probably asking me this question. Wouldn't have asked me this question if this was live long term how do i even get to that point well that means you need my second point one <laughs> you know why i told you it was going to be point one and point one and point one this is my second point one my second point one is this you need to have a short-term plan as well because you need to eat every day you know you're not you're not just going to eat 12 months from now like what are you going to do starve until then so you need to have a short-term plan that's generating business every day as well. So you need, you've got the long-term stuff and you've got the short-term stuff as well, right? That's what you need to do. Sorry, my hand's probably out of the camera right now. But anyway, you need to have the short-term thing as well. So that's what allows you to survive long enough to reach that long-term goal. Now, the, the short-term stuff, there's a problem with that. That's why we don't want it. That's why we don't call it long-term. That's why we don't want to be doing this long-term because it's not feasible. The short-term... Uh, issue is this you could fall sick um, there could be problems in the market there could be all sorts of unforeseen things can happen in the short term maybe it's not sustainable you know to make 400 phone calls a day um, 400 sounds like a lot but trust me there are people making over 100 phone calls a day in startups so persistence on that one but short term yeah you don't want to be doing this every day it's not even feasible usually so what do you do between that and the long term you need to have my third point one <laughs> So the midterm plan, you need to have a midterm plan to fill in the gaps um, between your short term and your long term. That's how you're going to survive. And that's why you always have three types of um, prospecting, marketing, promotional sales activities that um, are going on. Some of them with a long term plan to generate cash, some of them with the short term stuff because tomorrow you're still going to have to have lunch, breakfast, dinner and hopefully um, and you need the midterm stuff to, to fill in the gaps something that's happening underneath generating a little bit of income as well so all three of those need to be in place and you need to start all three at the same time so like start one start a second one start a third one you need to be working on all three of those every day okay as I talk and talk I need to just like bend and bend more further and further down like I'm getting ready for a fight or something I don't know just me anyway um, so that that's what will help you generate your cash flows. It's not just promotional marketing sales that we're talking about, but the, to the types of activities that you will need to generate a hefty cash flow, you need three of them, okay? All three of them at the same time. All right, next is working capital. It sounds important, so it gets a lot of attention. Um, I get questions about this a lot. Um, if you are still youngish, in this business journey, this will mostly come down to your cash flow. So I wouldn't worry too much about working capital. What is it? Okay, it's your ability to pay uh, to, to fund your business. That's what it's looking at. If liabilities or owners equity or whichever way you're funding your business, this one's looking at the, at the liability side of it. But, you know, um, at this point, worry about the cash flow and worry about this when you get a little bit bigger. 
Um, and I think that's that's probably all I would say here. I mean, money could be coming from investors, could be coming from loans, could be coming from like government money. Some people looking at the uh, tax incentives and all that. Okay, big big one for people like you right now. Do not fall for this. I call this the E myth garbage. Okay, uh, Michael Gerber, I think, wrote the book. He didn't write it for you. Okay, he wrote it for bigger businesses. Unless you're turning over a few million dollars, what working on the business? There is no business. You know, you're not going to be working on the business. You are the business. So you're going to be calling people. You're going to get customers. Don't outsource anything. Do the whole lot yourself. Do as much of the bookkeeping yourself. Um, learn Google stuff, YouTube stuff. Learn, you know, how to do that. Save the money. Um, outsourcing will reduce your profit. Show a smaller profit. You won't, you won't be able to get investment either. Okay, so it's it's not about that at this point. I mean, sure, think, use your head, but don't think too much. Spend 20 minutes thinking, 80% doing. All right, so don't spend that much time on the business. You are the business. So you work hard, you work your butt off. That's what you do at this point until it starts turning over a few million dollars. All right, okay, next one. This one is always a mistake. There's always a problem here. If I want to find mistakes in someone's books, I just jump into payroll. And have a look and there'll be mistakes there what is payGI what is payGW how much am I supposed to pay these people uh, do super do directors have to pay taxes on what what is super uh, what laws apply here what does a trust pay how is the tax paid okay remember how I told you not to outsource anything this part you definitely want to outsource this do not go in there go unless you're you're in the business of providing payroll unless you were an accountant before when you're starting a new business then you shouldn't be here really because you probably know everything that I've mentioned so far. Um, another one that they trip on, who's a subcontractor? It's it's a difficult thing. So you, you do want to have, you know, an expert looking at that. You do want your accountant to look at that or your bookkeeper to look at that. Okay. Uh, let's swing back to cash. Um, one thing that I find a lot of people um, do very well is to set up a different bank account for the tax compliance, different bank account for different purposes. And as soon as the money comes in, they just push it out to these buckets because they don't want that money available to them. And it sounds silly. It's like I should be able to control myself. But hey, 11 o'clock at night, I'm usually having snacks, cereals and all that. And I'm binge watching Netflix. I, I don't know if you guys are like me. Self-control. Yeah, I'm not big on it. I don't have a lot of it unless I put some controls in place. And these controls help me. Uh, the only way for me to stop watching Netflix is for me to just get rid of the membership subscription. That would probably be the only way for me to stop watching Netflix. I keep finding excuses to watch more and more, not less and less. So anyway, that's that's that. And that would help if you got different bank accounts that the money just gets direct debited out of your site. It's gone. Um, I have even gone as far as to deactivate online access to some of, of these bank accounts. If I really want to have something there. Uh, for example, for, for this laptop, a few thousand dollars, I've got that in the bank account with Bendigo, I think. And for the only way for me to touch that money is to actually go in there physically to get the bank, uh, to get the uh, to get the money. So that I've got money like that stashed away from my car. Like just like I just put them away like that because otherwise I use it. I'll find a good reason, enough reason, um, an excuse to use it. So there you go. Different bank accounts for different things. Big, 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 big one here. A lot of people trip on this and it has disastrous consequences. It's really widespread is this one. Please pay attention to this. This is a big one. Do not forecast better than what your historical performance was. History is always the best predictor. Okay. Don't lie to yourself. It takes more than effort and a good business model to make it. Okay. Uh, uh, if your real forecast based on his historical says you're going to run out, so you run your runways three months, well, that's what's going to happen. Take evasive, evasive maneuvers, you know, get a side job, hit pause, find other sources of income. Don't push the business itself because it won't go faster than that. That's what it is. That's what it's done so far. That's all it's going to do. It's impossible to turn around a business fast, no matter how optimistic you are and no matter how gullible you are when you're listening to gurus online. It doesn't work that way. All right. Um, and if you've got problems with your cash flow, it's going to make your investors run off. Banks are the same as well. So don't count on that. These guys only lend money to people that don't need it. There you go. I've said it. All right. Um, don't don't do it don't do it you want to gamble go to crown this stuff is for grown-ups not children okay I'm, I'm not calling you a child but you know you you can't think that way 
um, a lot of people do and they need to stop doing that full stop there's no there's no leg room on this one there's no flexibility to stop if your business has been a certain way that's what it's going to be for for a while okay it's going to take you some time to change it around so the biggest question out of all of this is this and if you don't know the answer you're either an idiot or you're about to become an idiot and you need to paddle hard the other way and get the answer so please be very careful with this i know that sounds a bit harsh but this is this is the line between you know stupidity and success and you, you need to paddle the other way otherwise you will you will become that person that everybody else is going to call an idiot, an idiot later okay this is it if your revenue grows the way it has in the last eight plus months and your expenses stay the same do you become profitable based on what you have left in your bank account you need to know that if you don't know that you need to go and find out now stop watching this video right now go and do that you don't need to learn it. you don't need to do anything else here go and find out what the answer is to that okay if not even if you're going to optimize it even you're going to tweak this you're going to tweak that you're going to change this it's probably not going to work out okay it's going to need much bigger efforts uh, to be able to save that business and the the software issues are also important here so are you going to win this are you what are you looking for work-life balance for example you know that's the emotional side i don't want to go too far there but if you look at successful startups you know they didn't think of work-life balance that came in million like millions later you know at the beginning like that there's no work-life balance if that's what you're looking for the entrepreneurship is not for you okay between broke and a million bucks it's a desert i've seen thousands of businesses i've i've got over i've had over a thousand businesses as customers and i can tell you that competition is fiercest where you are right now not among the more established businesses so at, at, at your level it's all in or all out okay if this is not your personality you shouldn't be here sorry and you know in a few years time you're still going to be there that's that's you um, i'm really sad to say this minus all your assets minus a wife happened to me by the way um that's that's what's going to happen so you need to look at that very closely if if you don't have the answer to that question if your revenue grows the way it has in the last eight plus months and your expenses stay the same do you become profitable based on what you have left in your bank account i have to say the question again nothing nothing wrong with getting a job if this is not for you go and get a job pile up some savings have another go at it don't push for at this point the business model is not working you're not putting enough time and effort you don't have enough time and effort to put into it or you just don't have the brain cells to handle this one okay hey, we are different people that's just the way it is okay so if you've watched this far and you're insane enough to keep on watching more what do we do next how often do you visit your financials so I can always tell when I'm talking to a business owner whether they're going to make it long term or something is going to happen to them in the midterm or something is about to happen to them very quickly how do I tell that how often are they in touch with their financials how often are they analyzing it how often are they scrutinizing scrutinizing their financials complacency kills startups if you look at your financials once a month you will be beaten by anyone that looks at it once a, once a week that's all it's going to take they're going to spend 20 minutes more and beat your business and like I said between broke and a million bucks it's a desert not many businesses either you make it or you don't because the one that makes it takes all the businesses it's gonna have the brand your customers will leave and go there that's what typically happens there are very few people in the middle that's hard that's actually harder than to be at the top um, I look at mine every day by the day by the way if you want to if you want to know um, for, for example if I ask you right now how much money do you have in your bank account for the business the business bank account keep that separate by the way most people usually don't have an answer for that I'm sorry if I sound abrupt with these things but better you find out now that you find out the way I did okay um, I lost a lot a lot personally financially and all that this these lessons are hard learned and also observing a lot of people that lost even more than I did okay um, so another question for you I don't know how many people watching now know what point you become profitable do you have that line in your forecast do you know if you're gonna meet that do you even have a forecast okay okay next one you want to look at I don't want to hammer, 
comment too much on the negative sides of this. But next thing, costing with optimism. Okay, that's a bad, bad idea. Okay, that's a really bad idea. Always do this with extreme paranoia and prejudice. Why? Because that's what always happens. I don't know. It's like visiting Melbourne without a raincoat and covered in sunscreen. You wouldn't do that, right? That's just insane. <laughs> People always overestimate their revenue and underestimate their, their expenses. So they over forecast their profit, so they can't plan anything, and they're blind to issues that could potentially happen, and they set themselves up for failure. So if you're watching this right now and your cash flow is bad, the mistake happened a long time ago. Okay? So if you're not if your cash flow is not bad, stop working on it now, and that mistake is not gonna happen to you two years from now, three years from now, six months from now, next week. So this failure right now potentially you're causing an issue that will bite your cash flow bum in maybe 12 months from now. Okay? Um, so what do you do? Look for anything strange. When you're looking at your financials, sorry, the camera shook. Um, if you're looking at your financials, look for something strange. Um, look for look for uh, look for a number that's out of place. Look for revenue slightly lower than what it's supposed to be. Look for cash flow higher, lower, whichever it is, and look into it. And don't be afraid to sound stupid when you ask your bookkeeper or accountant a question. You know, but even if they make you feel stupid, then maybe change accountant. But you know, be like Branson. Branson said it once. Uh, Richard Branson, that you know, you know, he 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 feels stupid at these board meetings and all that when he goes in there, but you know, that's not going to stop you from asking the questions. Um, and no, I do not want you. I don't. I don't want to see you wearing lipstick and a dress like Branson. I just want you to copy that part. Okay. Um, how do you do it? Okay. Again, it's easier to say than to do it, but it's a muscle that you develop every day. You build a bit of resistance. That's like your your Pfizer. You know, you build a little bit of resistance every day to this um, this feeling of feeling stupid. You're gonna feel it, but you build a resistance to it, and you're still going to ask your questions. And with time, it gets easier and easier to ask those uncomfortable questions that you feel like maybe you shouldn't be asking. Maybe it's gonna make you look stupid. You get over that. Sorry if you heard that. That's just a reminder there. Um, and make sure your bookkeeper or your accountant is also looking out for these variances, these changes. It takes more. It takes the whole village to raise a business. <laughs> hey, that's a good life. Um, hiring another money pit. Recruitment hire very, very, very slow. Fire super fast. Okay. Again, it's a muscle you build. You can't just be really good at terminating people and all that and affecting their lives. Um, overnight, but you need to get to the point where you can do that very quickly for your for your own sake. You need to get used to doing more with less. You need to abuse your comfort zone, get a bit creative, ask others what they're doing. Do not throw cash or people at an issue. Find other ways to fix first. Okay, fix the issue first. Um, look at at least. Okay, here's an exercise. Anytime you feel like you need to throw money at an issue to make it go away, look at five other alternatives. To restructure your business model so that you don't have to spend that money okay and if you get better and better at that you're gonna get more and more creative and you're gonna find ways around that uh, for instance if you think that just hiring more salespeople is gonna increase your your sales usually doesn't there's another issue maybe it's a product to market fit that's not there you know and you need to dis redesign the product change something the advertising side of things you know re get better copywriter to write better ads um, that sort of stuff like so so be, just be careful again investors you know when you're when you're handling investors when you're, your first round make sure that you're not planning on a second round that you're gonna need to throw more cash to make your problems go away okay um, look at your runway I mentioned this before that's basically how many months can you run before you run out you know that will give you leverage when dealing with investors as well so um, if you've got 12 months runway, you have more power. If you've got six months runway, a lot less. If you've got less than six months runway, they own that business. You don't. You just walked into another job. Okay? So just be careful with that. Okay. So how not to run out of cash? Probably the last thing we've run out of time. So be half an hour. It's a long video. Um, every day. Find ways to improve your cash flow. Your attention is required. It is not something you can delegate. It is not something you can leave to someone else to do. You need to be on top of that. And that's going to be like that for probably forever. 
Um, so start now, start small, start getting used to it, start getting used to the spreadsheets, start getting used to you know, monitoring everything that happens cash-wise in your business, be in it every day. All right, forecast your expenses better than everyone's, everyone else. Out forecast them. You know, get get better at this sort of stuff. Uh, look at your ratio to revenue in terms of employees or in terms of marketing. Keep that really high. Always make sure revenue is high. Has been generated from lower and lower cost of employees, not higher and higher cost of employees or marketing. Okay, that's what you need to be focused on. All right, um, I'm not going to talk about the company and company structure, tax structures, and all that. Uh, if you want to have a chat about that. Um, just contact me we'll talk about that separately or maybe I'll do another video about that one uh, but there you go I hope this was not too abrupt I know it was but I wish someone had said these things to me when I started because I learned these things the hard way and it was extremely painful and the only reason that I came across and I may have said some harsh things here is because I do not want you the way I don't I do not want you to suffer the way I did all right all the best, guys.